Umbilical cord and meconium drug testing. When newborn drug or alcohol exposure testing is needed, meconium and umbilical cord tissue are the gold standards for receiving a good picture of prenatal exposure during the last 20 weeks of gestation. These specimens produce unsurpassed results for hospitals and researchers while giving the newborn documentation for obstacles they may face in the future. In this video, we will walk through some of the similarities and differences between umbilical cord tissue and meconium testing. Detection window. As mentioned, the detection window of substances in umbilical cord tissue and meconium is unmatched when it comes to prenatal exposure testing. Alcohol and other drugs can be detected for up to approximately the last 20 weeks of gestation. Compared to urine testing. When considering prenatal exposure testing, it would be remiss not to consider urine testing, but both umbilical cord tissue and meconium are considered superior to newborn's urine testing for a few reasons. Urine testing has a limited detection window of up to approximately one to three days, so at best it only captures very recent use and not a full history of prenatal exposure. In-house urine testing may not include detection of more modern trending substances. And the collection itself is more difficult. The first void of urine is most relevant for exposure detection, but can be difficult on the newborn or may already be passed at birth. Distribution of drugs and drug metabolites. By nature of the specimen, drugs and drug metabolites are incorporated into umbilical cord tissue and meconium differently. During gestational exposure, drugs and drug metabolites are distributed uniformly throughout the length of the umbilical cord tissue. This means that the full detection window and history is captured in any given segment of umbilical cord upon collection, making it a specimen that is collected at the time of birth with one collector, saving valuable time and resources. Meconium, on the other hand, is developed throughout gestation with drugs and drug metabolites distributed non-uniformly over time. Collection of the full passage of meconium is needed to get the full detection window and history of exposure. This means meconium may require multiple collections by multiple collectors. Unfortunately, partial collection or passing of the meconium during birth may not show the full history of prenatal exposure. Volume of Specimen The volume of specimen determines the amount of drugs and drug metabolites that can be screened and confirmed at the laboratory. USDTL confirms all positive results. If the lab doesn't have enough specimen to test all of the panels that have been ordered, it is considered quantity not sufficient or QNS. Volume issues may arise with meconium due to stressful excretion during birth or premature newborns not producing enough to test thoroughly. Umbilical cord, on the other hand, is fully available at every birth with plenty of specimen for extended testing and retesting. Turnaround time. You may already know us as the lab that takes turnaround time seriously. Laboratory turnaround time begins once a valid and properly documented specimen is received into the laboratory. Generally, the standard turnaround time for reporting negative screening test results is the next business day, with an additional one to two business days for specimens that require confirmatory testing. Again, our laboratory confirms all positive results. We deliver on this turnaround 99% of the time for newborn results leading to a 97% customer satisfaction rating year after year from our hospital partners. We are told this makes us not only the quickest, but the most reliable newborn toxicology lab in the industry. And though our laboratory turnaround time is the quickest and most reliable for both specimens, it is worth noting that there is a variance between umbilical cord tissue and meconium when it comes to the amount of time it takes to collect the specimens. Umbilical cord tissue's immediate availability in single collector protocol means it can be shipped as soon as the hospital staff can get it sent out. Meconium's multiple collector protocol may take additional hours to days to collect the full passage before being approved for send out. This is further exacerbated with constipated newborns due to prenatal opioid exposure. This can mean meconium results may lag behind umbilical cord tissue results. And lastly is standardized collection. There is an increasing number of thought leaders who are finding that standardized collection, collection on every birth, is a valuable way to prevent missing information where the specimen can be used or not depending on the need. Though this is very difficult to do with meconium, it is simple to do with umbilical cord tissue and allows for more simplified hospital policy and procedures while preventing missed exposure. 
Collected specimens are sent into the lab if they meet criteria or if they can be stored refrigerated for three weeks in case the neonate presents with indicators days later, unneeded specimens are simply disposed of. Many of our hospitals have transitioned to umbilical cord tissue because the standardized rapid collection paired with quicker results works with their desired outcomes for their neonatal testing program. We hope that you found this information helpful. At USDTL, we give organizations the most innovative tools for detecting exposure to alcohol and other drugs combined with great customer service and quick turnaround times. Self-report isn't always accurate, so when the results matter, you can count on USDTL to be there for you. If you want to learn more about our testing or if you want to hear testimonials from our clients, please reach out to us to book a free consultation. We look forward to working with your organization to build a program that can give a voice to your most vulnerable patients. To learn more, please contact us at 800-235-2367 or visit us online at usdtl.com. Like and subscribe to our channel to receive notifications about new videos.